Hi folks, how are you doing? There we go with yet another uh, video of this series on Carlsos uh, Great Predestors as World Chess Champions. Today is the turn of Max Ewi, or Ewi, not really sure how to pronounce it correctly, but okay. Uh, he was the World Chess Champion between 1935 when he beat Alexander Alekin or Aliuhin and 1937 where he lost his title back to the same uh, Russian French GM. Uh, Max Iwi was, was, and was and has been the only Dutch chess champion of the world. Uh, he was a mathematician, a very, a very intelligent person, very wise, and really a gentleman, as it, uh, as it was said, said by all his contemporaries. He, he was a real gentleman. Later, he was the president of the F Federation, the International Federation of Chess, the FIDE, for long, long years. He had to deal, for instance, with uh, all that uh, problems with uh, Bobby Fischer's match, and etc. And okay, he, although he was a world, uh, world champion for only two years, he was really a strong player. He was uh, that champion for more than 10 or 15 years, I think. And he had uh, certainly lots of uh, strong... Uh, and, uh, lo he had lo certain lots of miniatures against strong players. The game I've selected, he, he played here in 1939 against Salo Landau in Netherlands. The opening is quite normal. He usually played, well, he really used to play everything. He liked to play e4, d4, c4. He liked the King's Gambit, the aggressive openings, as well as more uh, more calm positional lines. This time he faces a Slav defense, c6. Now knight f3, knight f6, knight c3, d takes c4, main line Slav. a4, bishop f5, e3, e6. Mm, no, nothing really... Strange happening here. This has been played thousands of times. Bishop takes c4, now bishop b4, this typical pin of the Slav. Short castle, knight bd7. Now the other main line also is to play first castle, now queen e2, intending to go e4. Now knight bd7, bishop e4, and the shop g6, and okay, although black has, uh, white has the central pawns on e4 and d4, and almost a perfect development. This uh, typical Slav or Karokan structure with the pawns on c6 and e6. Oops, not really meant that. Uh, will mm, make the game not that bad, not that complicated for Black. And well, uh, although he has less space, Black will sh shoots more or less hold here because he's not that bad. He has lots of development. But anyway, this wasn't played. Another main main move was played, which is to castle and play knight bd7 first. Now here, queen b3, attacking the bishop on b4, queen b6, e4, taking all the center, and bishop g6. Now at this point, uh, Max we played uh, a move which uh, which was to be repeated. Uh, more than 15 times, at least in my database, throughout the history, but he was, it was the Dutch champion who played this sacrifice for the first time. Uh, he found it on the board. He took only 6 with the bishop. Well, black has to take back, what else? And here a very important move, but at the first sight it doesn't seem that important or, or that great. a5, giving a pawn apparently for nothing. The bishop has to take because otherwise, if the queen goes goes away, well, black, uh, white just takes the bishop back, and is probably uh, in a much better position. The point is that uh, if white takes on e6, we check with the queen first. Black has this extra opportunity of playing bishop e7, although it may it may not be the the, the strongest move, but he has this extra chance of playing the bishop e7. It seems uh, well, it seems logical because he put play bishop f7 on the next move and try to bring the king to safety uh, and take his material trying to win the game. So to avoid that, Max Ewe plays a5 first, forcing this bishop to take on e5. Of course, he's not uh, white is not going to exchange on b6. He's going for the attack, and now he takes on e6. King d8 and e5, advancing this central pawn. Rook e8, queen h3. Now white has a sacrifice, sacrificed a pawn, I mean um, 
uh, piece for two pawns, or at, well, uh, yet uh, still one pawn. He has sacrificed material, but he doesn't have an immediate uh, killing attack. But he has lots of compensation on long term. Why? Because black has a very strangely looking king in the center, which is not going to castle anymore. And he ha in here uh, he has a couple of pawns here, which could potentially advance a lot and create lots of problems to black. Now bishop takes c3, and he takes f6 first. He's obviously uh, trying to get some complications. White is trying to get with his pawns into the black position. At this point, a uh, black uh, black played bishop b4. A uh, not really a great move. Uh, bishop b2 was played. Bishop taking b2 more correct uh, was played in the Soviet Championship in 1981 between Gavrikov and Dorfman. Funny enough, uh, the game was played just uh, some days after. Uh, Max Ewe died in 1981, so it was m much uh, much more uh, correct to play this and well, getting some other pawn here. But instead, Bishop B4 was played here, which allows White to take on G7, and already having uh, a passed pawn in, on the seventh rank, which is going to create lots of problems to Black. At this point, it is difficult to say what to do because well, White is already probably winning because. This pawn is going to be very strong, and black king is really uh, in a weak position, in a very bizarre position. Bishop d6 was played here. Computer suggests to play rook g8, and after bishop h6 protecting, king c7, and well, the engine says I'm holding, but really it seems difficult to 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 hold this, at least because well, your black pieces are not very coordinated and. White has uh, lots of potential threats here. So white, uh, black didn't find this move on the board. He went for this bishop d6, and after knight e5, attacking the knight on d7, threatening checkmate in one move, black has to take on e5, what else? If he tries to defend, for instance, say with queen c7, now bishop g5 check, mm, bishop d7, and now queen b3 is threatening to promote uh, to a queen on g8, and if white uh, black tries to defend with something like rook e7, the pawn would promote just to a queen. So black really has it seems to, uh, it seems black has really to take it. So it takes with the knight, d takes, and now once again we have all, we always have this threat of taking another queen here, winning the game immediately. Once again, king c7. Uh, is suggested as a better move than with what we will see in the game, but it really seems very difficult the position. So this pawn is going to advance, and it is not easy to play here with, with black. Anyway, bishop f7 was played. That, uh, it seems logical to protect uh, yeah, to uh, overprotect this g8 square, which is going to be very very weak. Now rook d1, pinning the knight, threatening to take it and checkmate black. Bishop d5, but now the pawn goes ahead e6 attacks the knight on d7 and something which is uh, probably more important it cuts the protection that the bishop was giving to this g8 square now he's threatening white is threatening in some point to to promote as well knight f6 it seems black is trying to control uh, 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 g8 trying to save the day but that knight on f7 isn't very isn't in a very great situation. It is. It is not protected. So bishop g5 attacks, pins, and it really seems hopeless. How do you defend that knight? Well, king e7 was played at this point, but queen c3, and now the knight cannot be defended anymore. Black white is going to take it for free, and probably one, uh, some of those uh, these pawns are going to to go very far, just kind of promoting. And well, of course, black is losing here. Uh, white sacrificed the knight for uh, this case for this pawn this point but he's going to take the piece back and these pawns are going to be unstoppable so here we go with the move, uh, a miniature uh, win in only 23 moves by Max Awe Ewe, uh, the chess uh, world champion from uh, from Netherlands who was uh, a very strong player this time and defeated nothing less that uh, nobody less than Alexander Alekin in a match in 1935. Uh, so this is was all for today. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you in next videos.